Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. It's probably afternoon when you listen to this. But uh, I was going to cook myself some something to eat because I haven't had anything all day. I'm starving. But I wanted to get this out the way. So I had a, really, I had a conversation uh, this afternoon with a good brother. Good brother. Uh, gave me some opportunities to speak. And so he was giving me some feedback from the people that we had done some work with. And all the feedback was bad. Uh, a lot of the feedback was good, but he just told me some things in particular. And one of the things that he told me in particular was he says, one of the people think that you're too confident. Too confident. So I said, okay. Now, I've, been, I've heard this before. This isn't the first time that I've heard this. I've heard that I am too confident, right? Um, and I, and I, I haven't even done posts about the, the benefits of arrogance, right? Because I don't think that arrogance is what everybody makes it out to be. Now, some of it is a hot take, all right? Saying that there's benefits to arrogance, some of it is a hot take, but then some of it is real. If you look at the definition of arrogance, it isn't all bad, okay? And it's, it's, it's an elevated uh, concept or elevated uh, belief that what you are doing is really, really important. It's elevated. It's, 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 it's maybe, uh, who knows, over the top to some people, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, sometimes um, you need to feel like your little job that everybody thinks is little, you need to feel like, like it's important in order for you to uh, do that job with a high level of uh, excellence, right? So that job that's really on the bottom, no one, ever, no, one, no one doesn't think is very important. Well, the only way that I'm ever gonna get a, a more important job is if I take this little job and consider it to be a big job. And I do it with a lot of professionalism, a lot of effort, a lot of detail, as much as is needed. And hopefully I get a little bit more responsibility, a little bit more opportunity so I can do a big job. So if I come in and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling some kind of way about myself and I'm feeling some kind of way about the work that I have to do with this little job that I have, that, that might be what I need in order to get a bigger opportunity, right? So if I come in with an elevated uh, uh, feeling or perception of my work, of my, or, or I feel like I'm more, a little bit more important than how everybody else views me, and you consider that as arrogant, then so be it. But I may need to be that way in order for me to do my job. You think of how many women, right? Or, or, or who are working around men and how they need to show up. Sometimes they need a little bit of arrogance in order to kick behind or to perform on a high level or to show up and, 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 and to unlock their ability and their confidence because without it, they may get stumped on, they may get bypassed, they may get ignored. So sometimes that, that, that confidence that may, be translit that they may go to the arrogant level, sometimes it's necessary, right? But this person said that I was too confident, cocky, all right? So I thought about it and I said, well, you know, while I was doing my speech, I made sure that, and I was talking about genius level talent, and I, I made sure that as I was talking about genius level talent, I made sure that I said to the kids, um, my genius level talent is faith. Faith isn't really cool, sexy, right? If I sat down at, for a job interview at, or at a job fair and told someone that my genius level talent is faith, they'd probably look at me like I was crazy. You know, they, if I told them that I have the ability to believe on a really high level, they'd look at me and say, man, are you, are you serious? Is this a joke? You know that you probably have uh, uh, better answers than faith. So I made sure that I helped the kids understand that my genius level talent is faith, but I'm working it. And your genius level talent may not be running, jumping, singing, dancing, acting, numbers, science, or something like that. It could be something very vague like faith. And if that's your genius level talent, that's cool. Figure it out. Figure out how to work it. So I felt like I lowered myself down so that um, I was relatable. And then I definitely want to bring it back up because I want to show them my confidence and my conviction and my genius level talent, which is my faith. And as I thought about what I had done and what I what my intentions were when I was speaking, I said, you know what, whatever, man, you can't win them all. You can't win them all. But I just want to make sure that people out there understand the value of confidence. And sometimes you got to take it to another level in order to get the job done. OK, because there are so many people out there who want to dim one's star. They want to convince you that being confident, being self-assured, being, um, um, 
speaking with conviction. They want to, uh, they want to convince you that this isn't the way you should show up. You shouldn't show up this way. You should show up as a watered down dummy version of yourself. And there's a, there's a, there's a time and a place when you're around the elders, right? When you're around the people who, who got it. Okay. There's a time and a place for being humble, but too much humility can bite you in the butt. I used to get, I used to get, my wife, Sarah would always say, um, I, would, I would talk to people and I would, hadn't seen them in a while. And so they say, well, what are you doing? You still training? I say, yeah, I'm still training kids. I, you know, just mess around. I don't, you know. And she was like, Marv, you spend hours in the gym training kids. You spend hours in the gym training yourself. You spend hours in front of the TV watching games. You spend hours in front of, in front of the, 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 the computer looking up content you spend hours reading and you tell somebody that all you do is mess around and like teach kids a few different what and it was like I, I got so caught up in trying to 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 be humble and dummy myself down that I would overdo it and now when somebody was probably looking for a trainer or looking for me to say yeah I'm still training I would I would kind of talk them out of wanting to do work with me because I made it seem as though I'm not really doing much and here it is, I was working every single day to become somebody significant. Working every day to become somebody strong within the game of basketball as it relates to training. But I wanted to dummy myself down, so I flipped it. Because I thought as much as humility can be awesome, too much of it may force you to sell yourself short. So sometimes you got to bring it. Sometimes you got to be confident. Never was a very good student, right? I was really smart until like the fifth grade. I was incredibly intelligent. And then things just went downhill. I struggled in middle school academically, right? Around eighth grade, I figured some things out. Went to middle school, went to high school, struggled. One year, I had to go to summer school because I did so poorly in some of my classes. Junior year, senior year, I figured it out. I tricked somebody and admitted me to go to to go to go to go to college, going to college, I was in remedial classes. I was in cl the classes that I, I I was in these classes that were for people who didn't test well on reading, mathematics, so on and so forth, right? Did poorly in those classes, right? Passed them, okay. Did poorly in those classes. Somehow, some way, I I I, I did halfway decent, halfway decent. I mean halfway decent. I mean. I'm we barely on the sea level, right? Got a chance to go to Concordia. Somehow I got in and there. Have no clue because my grades were terrible, right? They weren't the level of their standards. Got into Concordia University. Struggled. Struggled. My GPA accumulative is like 2-3, right? But I graduated. I did enough. I graduated. I was working my butt off, though. Hey, really good study habits. But I was so, I was so insecure. I was so insecure that I would get anxious and I would overthink myself. And I, because of that, I was a poor test taker. There's a bias that's called, oh, I wish I could remember it. There's a bias that many people of color have. And the bias basically is defined by people who are afraid of, of exemplifying a negative trait of a certain race, right? So what happened is I would take these tests and I was so concerned that I would fall into the, 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 the role or the expectation that blacks don't test well that I become over anxious, over stressed out and, 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 and test poorly. Mind you, I used to tutor people in some of these classes. They get better grades than I would and I was tutoring them. But that's how insecure I was. But I graduated, did my own thing as an entrepreneur, and somebody, Ricky Young, was silly enough to, no, no, he wasn't silly enough, the admissions department at Concordia was silly enough to let me get my master's, although my grades weren't up to, up to par. Now, this go around, because I got better confidence, I easily got a 3.5, 3.8 GPA or something like that. It was easy, Right? But it's because I had confidence to go around. It's because I knew that I had the growth mindset. I knew what I had to offer. 
And, and, and oh, by the way, I got a 15 on the ACT. So I come from this and now I'm at a place in my life where I'm confident and I'm self-assured. And I, and, I, and I know I got a genius level talent that, that, that makes me special. And I know I'm not special in all these other areas, but I know in this one area, I am special. And it kills me that somebody would say, he's too confident. He comes across as cocky. I need it. My goal is to one day talk to millions and millions of people across the nation. Maybe even, you know, out of the country, right? That's going to require some confidence to get up in front of people who have these incredible expectations and to have enough confidence and enough conviction behind what I'm saying that it could possibly move and inspire them to be their highest version of themselves. For them to, to, to believe that all it really takes is for you to become something is to dream, declare, and commit, and success will be your next breath. It takes confidence, man. It takes confidence to know that there are young people coming that are that are stronger, that are faster, that are that are quicker, that are that are that are more advanced in certain areas. And here I am getting older, but still needing to be competitive. How do I stay competitive? Part of it is I gotta stay confident. I see some people, man, that blow my mind away, and I think to myself, how am I ever gonna penetrate this market? This guy over here is great. This guy over here is sensational. This guy over here is incredibly talented. This guy over here has generated millions of dollars for himself and millions of companies, and he's telling people how to become successful. I don't have any of that. How do I compete? Two things, three things. With my genius level talent, with a ridiculous and sickening work ethic, and with confidence. I gotta be confident in my work. I gotta be confident in my genius level talent. And I can't afford to water myself down. So if I come across as cocky, can't win them all. But I need it. I got to have it. It's a part of my recipe. And I encourage you, be confident. And if you rub somebody the wrong way, hey, figure it out. Figure it out. Find a balance. But understand this, sometimes you absolutely 100% have to show up confident. Because if you don't, They'll overlook you. They'll find a way to walk past you. Now, there's got to be some work behind it. There's got to be some genius level talent behind it. You can't just have empty confidence. You got to have the work and you got to have the skill, right? But man, be confident. When Jay-Z gets up on stage, you think he's the, hum the most humble rapper alive? No. When Beyonce gets on stage, you think... She's humble about her ability to sing, dance, perform. No. Now maybe a month, maybe when she's looking at a great, at a great, and she's in the presence of a great, when she's in the presence of a, 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 a Stevie Wonder, yeah, there may be some humility. But don't get it twisted. I'm sure she'll tell Stevie Wonder, I get busy too, right? She's singing and dancing and performing, and people are spending thousands of dollars traveling from all across the who knows where to come here or perform. It's because when they see her and her confidence, they, for a second in life, for a moment in life, they feel confident too. And maybe that confidence helps them to go to work and get after it. Maybe that confidence helps someone to get out of a bad relationship. You never know how those, those moments when we see confidence, how it can impact someone else. So for us to be out here and not have any confidence, we may be letting somebody else down. So I'll never, ever get on somebody's case of being too confident. If anything, I'll tell them, you should be more confident, especially if you're working really hard and you got a genius level talent that's backing everything that you're doing. Be confident. Believe in yourself. It's healthy. You're not going to please everybody. Somebody's going to see you going hard. They don't see all that content. They don't see all that back. They don't, they don't know what's behind the curtain. Because they don't know what's behind the curtain. They'll just think, oh, that person's cocky. That person's arrogant. That person's conceited. Let them think what they must. As long as your intentions are good, and long as you know that you need, you're using that confidence to perform at your absolute best for everyone else to do your highest level of work, it'll be, it'll be fine. 
you'll be okay. And the critics, they'll be okay too. But that being said, I'm done. Take care. Be confident. Mark Fox Jr. Peace out. Oh, and hit it.